Hey, hello and welcome back, everybody. Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. Uh, it's episode 127, and we're just going to keep knocking them out, and this has been fun. Uh, I'm in the middle of the 10,000 swing challenge uh, as I'm writing. Uh, it's going well. I'm also doing Rusty Moore's fat loss boost. Uh, I'm also preparing for an Olympic lifting meet. Uh, so it's 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 a good time in my life. Uh, uh, I'm focused on my nutrition. I'm focused on my kettlebell work. I'm focused on my Olympic lifting work. And uh, who knows, maybe that'll make a good po uh, podcast. Uh, reminder, remember, uh, we have a special going on right now where uh, at danjohnuniversity.com, it's uh, 29 bucks for three months. If you put the discount code new year, one word, new year, uh, which is a really a good deal and, and welcome aboard. I hope a lot of you join. The workout generator is amazing. The forum is amazing. Uh, the courses are really good. I'm very proud of the courses. And because it is January, our goal setting course for non-members is 30 bucks. Uh, for current members, it's 15. So if you join the site, basically you, you would get the, the goal setting course almost for free. Um, compared to you know, the normal rates, it's math, and I'm getting confused because the only math I can do right now is add up to 500 swings a day for 20 straight days. I love the site. I really like the forum. Um, the nice thing about the forum, and I, and a shout out to to the membership. When somebody asks a question, the the responses they get, people write full paragraphs. They're kind. They're they're helpful. It's it's worth it. Um, we don't have any. Uh, we don't have anybody just comes in, says something negative, and pops out. So uh, let's do this, okay? Uh, let's begin. Uh, we have a question from Johnny, and Johnny says, "How much progress using kettlebell easy strength would I make if I sifted through all the exercises and just did the three that I hear you mention the most often: the kettlebell swing." weighted carries in the goblet squat. Would there be any obvious weakness to following only those three exercises? Thank you for any input you can give. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the thing that stands out instantly would be you, ha you don't have a, a press or a pull. Now, for a short period of time, I don't, I don't see that as a problem. I, I never see dropping a movement out for a short period of time to be a problem. Uh, now, if it's 10 years, that's 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 where the issue becomes, and it's interesting because somewhere between two weeks and ten years is the sweet spot. Uh, uh, I have found in my career I can I can stop doing certain things for a while and pick right back up on it. In my case, uh, pressing I can not press for a while, but I like to press, so that doesn't happen too often. But um, if you're doing swings and goblet squats. Uh, for kettlebell easy strength, you're, uh, I mean, you'd want to be doing like, uh, oh, we have a few workouts we've done in the past. These workouts, by the way, Johnny, are going to be very fast. But if you were to do something as simple as uh, 15 swings, 5 goblet squats, 15 swings, 4 goblet squats, 15 swings, 3 goblet squats, 15 swings, 2 goblet squats, 15 swings, 1 goblet squat, you got 75 swings, you got 15 goblet squats. And then, you know, just take the weight off and take that single bell and go. Go for a walk. Suitcase, carry it, rack, walk it, waiter, walk it, switch hands, do whatever, you know, the horn, walk it, do whatever you got to do. And, you know, boy, uh, I've had some of my clients who are uh, special uh, people. Uh, they go up to 10 kilometers with a 32K bell doing that, which is just stunning to say out loud. Yeah, the weakness would be the push-pull. Uh, another uh, another quick art, uh, uh, workout you might want to try, we call this the sparrow hawk or the spar hawk. Uh, you do eight goblet squats, you suitcase carry it, seven goblet squats, suitcase carry opposite hand, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, <clears throat> if you were to do it on a field where you could do, uh, the only problem is remembering left and right, and we fix it. Uh, <laughs> When we do it outside in front of my house, the kettlebell is always on the house side. So if you're walking this way, it's this hand. If you're walking this way, it's this hand. 
but uh, just make sure you alternate the suitcase carries. It sounds weird. It sounds weird, but people won't do that. It, you'll just kind of forget because you're trying to get through the workout. Uh, don't put the bell down. Johnny, I, I think there's, I like the idea. I mean, I think there's real value to this. Uh, you know, toss in an occasional set of hangs, pull-ups, some overhead, you know, some presses. Yeah, you're fine. I like it. In fact, it's, yeah, it's funny because I'm in the, ten, when I do the 10,000 swing challenge, when I hear something like that, it's like, oh yeah, I should do that. Because, you know, the last thing I want to do is more swings. But I like this idea. Okay, Paul says this. Dan, are your hamstrings sore all of the time? Because mine are. Uh, I'm a 45-year-old physical education teacher and football coach from Ontario, Canada. My workout for the year includes easy strength, then easy strength Olympic lifting, uh, Southwood for a few weeks, and then the 10,000 swing challenge, currently on day three. I perform mobility exercises at least four days a week. I also ice regularly and use the Theragun. Uh, my Theragun is right there, getting charged up. Um, my hamstrings sore constantly. Uh, yeah, uh, my hamstrings have only been sore since 1971. Uh, yeah, um, I have a hot spot. Mike, my, my physical therapist, thinks it's funny because, I mean, if he just presses those hot spots, I mean, I arch up. I mean, it, there's a lot of pain. So yeah, hamstrings, but that's a good sign, Paul. If your hamstrings are sore, that means that the glutes are doing all the, all the lower the work. You know, if your lower back is sore, that means your technique is not where you want it to be. Yeah, my hamstrings are sore. They're always right on the rim of being, um, like, I always feel like they're right on, oh, I should be careful here. I might pull a muscle, but they don't. Um, I think people who are natural hingers always feel a lot of tension in their hamstrings. This is just my experience. There's no science on this at all. So, you know, those people who come in and attack me on the comments, just ease up, okay? It's just something I've noticed. But hamstring, people who tend to be uh, hingers tend to have tight hamstrings. And there's probably a good reason for it. Those who tend to be squatters, I don't know. I don't never, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not one. But it'd be interesting to know what they get sore of, feel that. I, the old word was tonus, T-O-N-U-S. That mm, the that noise, that static that the muscles seem to always just hold in there. Uh, the knots, K-N-O-T-S, knots. Yeah, yeah, Paul, I'm always sore in the hamstring. So good question and thank you. We have a question from Mark. I was hoping to get your thoughts on how to make the most out of my time in the gym. Yes, workout. Oh, there's more. My philosophy for exercise has been to do what I enjoy, which is not a bad plan, man. I tell you, if you were be able to find a push, a pull, a hinge, a squat, a load to carry that you love doing, and you just said, you know, screw it, I'm just going to do this the rest of my life, you would be uh, in fairly good shape and very happy and not have half the issues that most people I deal with have. Uh, I'm a big fan of weighted chin-up and clean and presses, so I do them often. And that's a pretty good combination of things to do. Right now, I'd like to put on some muscle mass, so I've added high rep squats at the end of every workout. But I wanted to ask, are there good mass building exercises or techniques I can add to my routine? Well, you're doing the three... I mean, for some people, I would say dips... Because some people get more out of dips than guys like me get out of clean and press. And that's, who knows why. But boy, I mean, you're doing the weighted chin up. You're doing the clean and press. You're doing the higher up squats. Those those are the money ones. Uh, or would a smarter approach to be doing a mass building program like Mass Made Simple, which is my book, which is marvelous. And you should own it, uh, all gentle uh, listeners. Go to uh, otpbooks.com on Target Publications and buy the book. And if you buy it there, you also get the, I think I did the audio on that, but you also get the all the extra forms and uh, all the other uh, styles a couple times a year and work on my favorite exercises in between workouts. Um, in my easy strength course and in the book I'm working on, I talk about how handstand push-ups and high rep back squats seem to work 
really well for mass for a lot of people. And it's because you take all of this basically out of it because I mean, yeah, you're, well, you're holding your body weight, but you're not act actively grabbing anything. Uh, um, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of doing Mass Made Simple because it's a program and there's a start and there's a finish to it. And I like that. But if you just feel like doing weighted chins and clean and presses and high rep squats, I mean, I, I mean, I, I think that's a great program. Yeah. I mean, certainly plan maybe a couple. I think most people can only do one bout of Mass Made Simple a year. My American football players, we have them do two. Um, because in American football, uh, people slow down, but no one gets smaller. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I think Mark, no matter what you do is good because you have really good options, man. If, if you have good options, <sighs> life's pretty good. Uh, you know, um, I, I have all those things I've written about managing compromises and versus managing options. But when you have good options, I think it's sometimes even harder <laughs> than if you have crappy options. So, hey, I love what you're saying, Mark. Uh, let me know what you decide and uh, get back to me, okay? Thank you. We have a question from Brandon. I was curious on the specifics of what kind of salad you eat. Uh, well, I buy my favorite thing to do is buy the bag salads at the store and just don't put the. They usually have like. Uh, croutons I don't, I don't put the croutons in there because that's just extra i mean that's extra calorie and i don't think it adds that much to the salad anyway um uh soups uh, i mean salads for me uh over at the ice house here in murray they have a really good salad uh and over at landmark grill here in midvale they have a a cob salad a greek cob salad that's that's fantastic i i Personally, I think the key is to get as many vegetables as you can. And the recipe to my vegetable soup, where did I share that? Oh, that's in the book Attempts. And it's also, that's also, oh boy, uh, I want to say it's on the, on the course. But uh, if you just type in online Weight Watchers Vegetable Soup, that's the, that's the recipe I use the most. For me... The, the key to a good vegetable soup and, and I'm, I'm not I'm not great at it um, is if is if you can have time uh, time seems to be the most important thing and if you're just using vegetables you're not putting barley or a, a pasta in it um, you, you have to be you have to have some real variations of vegetables in there um celery uh, celery will give it a crunch but if you cook celery in too long it loses everything just kind of flattens out uh, for example uh, you know there are certain members of the potato family that are actually pretty good but once they sog out they just become kind of soggy um i learned this from thomas my son-in-law is that you, and you're going to have to experiment with this. I'm no expert. Is that you, you put in certain vegetables at certain times. So, and just, just a, a ballpark thing that I've discovered, root vegetables, that is anything that grows in the ground, um, those can go in earlier. That'd be uh, things like carrots. Now, you know, some of the, some potato family, I, I really like those fingerling potatoes for this and those purples and reds and stuff um you put the root vegetables in first and then as you uh, radishes by the way work really well in soups and then you let those slow cook you know let those slow cook at a lower heat um okay when i slow cook i i put it on hot for maybe let it you know it takes a while to heat up but once it's hot, and you can tell by, because when you touch it, it oh, you know, it's hot. Let that happen a little bit, and then I bring the temperature way down, and then I let everything just kind of sit and simmer. Let the let the root vegetables go for a couple hours, and then add the other ones on top, the more <laughs> the more leafy vegetables, and then that way, uh, the more the more leafy ones, they they tend to really, if you, if you know what I'm talking about, they really shred out. 
Uh, and then towards the end is when I get a little more serious with the, towards the end is when I'd add things that have already been prepared, like maybe kimchi and stuff like that. What I'm doing now is I'm taking the bowl of vegetable soup and, and then I put the kimchi on top. Um, we use a lot of green onions here in the house. So green onions, uh, I've discovered work best at the end because then it keeps that little taste and that little bit of crunch. Uh, Brandon, uh, I hope that helps. I know it wasn't very specific and a little vague, but when you're doing working with vegetables, you have to be because there's so many kinds. Okay, thank you. We have a question from Thomas. Thomas says, I recently signed up for an event in March called the Arnold 5K Pump and Run. It consists of bench pressing a percent of your body weight followed by a 5k race for every rep you do on the bench you get 30 seconds off your 5k time up to 30 reps or 15 minutes huh it seems to me that you'd want to get 30 reps in this in this competition because <laughs> 15 minutes on a 5k <laughs> that's what you should okay i come from a track and field family so you have to be careful uh, my brother is funny. He's like, uh, yeah, if you run a, 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 a 5k in 30 minutes, you're not running. He, uh, he's, he's kind of a, he's a funny guy. Uh, I'm 65 years old, 5'10", 178 pounds. I run three times per week and compete in local 5k races. So the run isn't a, a worry. Based on my age, I have to bend 70% of my body weight or 125 pounds. I tried this and get 22 reps. The first reps are easy, but around 18 or 19, lactic act kicks in quickly. Yeah. How should I train for this? Well, so I'm, I'm glad you asked because I'm kind of a master of high rep uh, exercise. I'm really good at them. Um, so Barry Ross would recommend that you strive to get your max up as high as you can. I still think there's value to that. So Thomas, one if you're running three days a week, I, you know, it might be for the contest now, bench three times a week. Now, generally, I would never recommend benching three times a week. But I would say two of the bench press workouts every day should be uh, kind of a, just a real simple um, build up your reps kind of program. Uh, an easy strength approach would work. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything too fancy, you know. Um, Maybe one of the workouts, you're, you're going to need more volume than what I would normally recommend, but maybe five sets of five. So, you know, you know, a traditional high volume workout. Um, you know what? At the first time you do it, you could even do uh, 125, 135, just a little bit more. Just get, you get those 25 reps in. On the other day, I would suggest a more max day. So a set of five, a warm up. A set of three with just a little bit more weight and then a double where you have a spotter and you see how much you can do um, and I would really try that try to really work on that and then the third day is simply you test you test once a week um, what you're gonna find is that that five sets of five is probably the one that's gonna nudge those high reps up but you want to get as strong as you can so I mean <laughs> I, I don't know what the number would be, but we used to do, see, we used to do these contests, body weight bench press for reps. And I think my, I think the best I ever did was 22 at Dick Notmeyer's gym. So, you know, 225 for 22 reps is good. I mean, this is before, um, this is before all that nonsense with the combines happened. So this was us Olympic lifters just doing it as a, a lark. You know, I hadn't bench pressed in a year and you got 22 reps out of it. But when your bench press is bigger, it's easier to get more reps. Okay. It's the same what you would find in running where, you know, those, those high volume garbage days tend to make those faster day, shorter, faster days work a little better. I mean, I still, I'm still convinced we're not sure how all this happens. Um, I know you recommend keeping total reps for push, pull, and squats the same. Do I need high reps on those as well? No, no, Thomas, because you're doing a contest. So 
Now, f- while you're preparing yourself uh, January, February, March for this contest, um, yeah, you need to uh, you need to bench and run uh, after the the day you, the week after you finished. Let's undo all that damage <laughs> and let's get back to the pulls, the hinges, the squats, everything else. Okay. Good question, Thomas. And I expect to find out that you did well. Thank you. We have a question from Scott. I was wondering with your experience of sports conditioning, you can see a charlatan a mile off. Hmm. You know what's hard about, yes, and I'm going to continue to read your question. And see the red flags of a waste of time. Being someone to whom was late to the exercise party and didn't look after themselves until later in life, I have trouble sometimes seeing the wheat from the chaff. Especially since the innovations in cosmetic surgery, you aren't sure if they got this way from the program they are promoting. Well, Scott, I mean, there's a very famous person in this industry who had all these, uh, he had a magic diet and a magic exercise program. And then one time just kind of flippantly mentioned on one of his posts that, oh yeah, I've been doing hormone replacement therapy. And of course the person almost instantly went offline because listen, if you're rubbing testosterone on yourself every single day, um, whether you do five sets of two or two sets of five ain't going to matter. The testosterone is going to take care of a lot of things. Um, anytime someone uses a word from another tradition, chakras, guru, sensei, samurai, um, (laughs) the word warrior, I I wrote that article for T Nation years ago where I had this next uh, book, um, and, and, and the first column was the number and it was like two weeks, it was like two, four, six, and then the next column was weeks. Days, weeks, months. The next column was a list of words like warrior, convict, uh, samurai. And now you'd have to throw in animals, tiger, leopard, you know, swan. And then the last line was conditioning, strength, mass. Um, You know, Greg Shepard had the book Eat Like a Tiger. Uh, There's that book Being a Supple Leopard. Uh, I just saw another book where they had a, on the cover of the book is a jaguar for some reason y'all want to look like you know cats which i and now i feel like i'm sammy sammy davis jr hey you cats you know um so i'm not saying that those books are charlatans i'm not i'm just saying when i see those certain terms when i see certain words now then it's not true 20 years ago i'm like here we go you know Uh, When I see cadence in a workout, you know, three seconds up, one second pause, four seconds down, whatever, that, because I, how would you possibly think with a huge load? Like when I'm snatching, I, you know, I'm trying to get the weight over my head. I'm not going thousand, one thousand, two, three, one thousand. Oh gosh, there's so many things. Um, You know, my my friend Charles uh, Staley one time told me, that the word instantly was added to one of his books, um, how to gain one inch instantly to your arms in two weeks, and because the word instantly uh, sold more books. And I, and I thought that was fascinating because instantly and two weeks are both in the title, but by adding the word instantly, it got you going. <laughs> when I see people come from uh, other, tra- here, it comes down to this. If it's not track and field, yeah, almost universally when I read a track and field strength coach, I nod along the entire time I lean in. And it could be a distance coach. It could be uh, anybody in track and field. Because in track and field, we have to, it's the time, it's the clock and it's the tape. You know, the, the timer and tape, the two T's. Uh, so, you know, and, it, and the funny thing is when you look at the Olympics, most people want to look like track and field Olympians. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I mean, when I'm watching the Olympics or the world championships um, with, with with anybody who's, anybody, uh, almost universally, one of the things that make my God, their bodies. So Dan, what's their secret? And I was like, well, run three, 400 meters as fast as you physically can and let me know what their secret is. Their secret is, is that that's really hard to do. Um, 
oh, uh, anytime someone talks about weightlifting and then has a, you know, now listen, I, I, there are supplements I support and, and I think you know that there's a company called hibernate. Well, they're in, uh, they're in the, the pills are in my, uh, in my bathroom. Uh, hibernate is a sleep formula that has magnesium and the, a few other things. And I like it a lot. Now, certainly I can go over, I'm in, in Utah, every, every drugstore, every supermarket, every, every place you go has supplements. Utah is a supplement friendly state. Um, in fact, it was our Senator who wrote, uh, who made the law that basically, uh, supplements are completely unregulated in the United States and boy, so I've had some people find out there was this great supplement back in the eighties that you could buy that <laughs> it was just <laughs> what I was told it, it had not only high end, uh, uppers in it but it also had it had low end steroids in it and people loved it and it worked really really good uh you know and, and so yeah if 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 a strength coach is also pushing pushing supplements that you have to buy on their site then i then i kind of go oh, okay here you go um i like it when people are honest and candid uh that's why my great respect for I have great respect for, like, for example, Westside, agree with them or disagree with them. They are candid about the fact that they use uh, anabolics. So when I read their work, at least I know. At least I know. So that those are mine. Um, <laughs> it's funny because when you mentioned uh, cosmetic surgery, you know, I've had a ton. I've had three surgeries on this face because uh, I've broken my nose some many times and come oh yeah so don't listen to me because i've broken yeah there heard that one person a couple weeks ago say don't listen to me because i've i've had surgeries it's like yeah i've had surgeries because uh and in fact it's on instagram i'm pinning a guy in his defense is to put his hand here and my nose broke boom i pinned him and then i bled all over everybody um yeah, so I broke my nose in playing an American football game because my helmet, I hit a guy so hard my helmet broke and it broke my nose. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a fake tooth. I've had surgeries here. We, we had a surgery up here so I could breathe in this nostril. I wasn't able to do that for almost 40 years. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've had cosmetic surgery. Can you tell? Uh, <laughs> cosmetic surgery, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the amount of lipo and, uh, oh, here's, here's something. If a woman gets breast augmentation and she's a fitness model, that's cosmetic surgery and she looks different and she has a different set of rules. Uh, I know some, uh, fitness models who have had massive amounts of lipo, breast augmentation, uh, face work done, uh, and they're on, uh, uh, and they take, uh, amphetamines uh, for fat loss and they take anabolics for body uh, strength. And then they say to do this workout program. But without the other things, I like your point. I beat it to death. I hope that helps, Scott. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to complain that I called out certain people, but I didn't. I don't think I meant to. Just if everyone could be honest for a weekend, you'd be shocked. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, Joshua says this. I have assumed you have crossed paths with Judd Logan. Now, Judd was a four-time Olympian in America as a hammer thrower. An outstanding coach at Ashland. Any memories or reflections upon his passing earlier this week? You know, Joshua, I'll just, there's just one funny story. And I'll just share that because, you know, I'm. So uh, years ago, in fact, the video's online. Uh, my daughter videoed a track meet where she was only, she was so young. Um, it was the Ohio State Twilight meet. And that's when. At age 47, I threw 180 feet of 55 meters, which is just freaking outstanding for a 47-year-old to throw the 2K that far clean. I mean, and uh, so I'm throwing, and after the discus, Judd walked o over and he goes, uh, I got to tell you something. I go, I go, what? He goes, I'm really glad you threw far. And I go, I go why? He goes, I've been reading your stuff online a long time, and I'm just glad you weren't some little nebbish who talked a lot but couldn't back it up in the ring. 
And I thought it was hilarious because we both laughed and we had this great conversation about, and, and if you're in the st- if you're in the field I'm in, you know, you'll go to a conference and you'll meet somebody who just is such a total asshole online, just a total jerk. You know, you don't, and then you meet him and it's like, have you ever lifted weights in your entire life? So, uh, it's an issue that comes up all the time. You know, when, when you meet these, uh, you, you'll meet these fitness professionals and in real life, they look, they don't look, you know, it's pretty obvious the only time they share photos is from photo shoots, you know, and in real life, it's like, hmm. So it was not, so in real life, I threw the discus far and it, it, and we had this conversation about how he, he had trusted my work before, but since I had thrown far, he trusted it even more. And we had a, we had kind of a delightful conversation about it, it takes us right back, honestly, to the question that Scott just asked about uh, charlatans in this field. And it is nice sometimes to be able to talk to somebody, like like our, my conversation I had with Judd. Um, we, we talked about the charlatans in the field, but then what qualities are you looking for for somebody you trust? And for me, I one of the qualities I look for is... Uh, um, uh, you know, a level of honesty that that that's uh, that you know uh, someone who you know who makes mistakes and keeps striving on. So that's that's a good quick story for you, uh, uh, Joshua. And thank you. And uh, and uh, let's uh, let's uh, remember Judd and keep it in our blessed memories. Uh, we have a question from Davis. I'm interested in your experience working with taller NBA athletes. You discussed your observations building for power and strength with taller athletes. Would you recommend additional tips for building leg and glute size as it relates to performance? Yeah, I do wish I would have had the hip thrust back then. I had seen it at the Olympic Training Center, but I didn't use it. I think that the hip thrust um, might really help because then you can just, you can put load uh, on the hip area. Uh, you can be bands or weights, whatever you decide, it doesn't matter. But yeah, the hip thrust would be the one I added. We, we did a lot of box squats with them. Um, the, you, you, you do your best. I mean, you're, those, those, you just do your best. And you, I think you have to be a little bit more patient with those tall basketball players when it comes to building size, only because you're dealing with such long levers. Uh, I'm a high school basketball coach, and it's instantly clear when one of our players is outmatched physically on post-up play. He'll routinely get pushed out of the way, uh, out of the key by his defender, or the defender will easily swim around him to steal the ball, and the opportunity breaks down. Their legs aren't strong enough to hold the ground. But another factor on these post-ups has to do with creating separation. Guys with bigger, stronger glutes can easily keep their defenders on their backs. They can also get more separation when they bowl their way to the rim. For our guards, creating that slight separation with your back to the basket can sometimes mean the difference between a successful turnaround jumper and a blocked shot. Same goes for a box out on a rebound. The size of your butt and legs makes an impact in creating for certain shots. I'm thinking about recommending principles for Mass Made Simple, which I read and loved. Anything else you would add? Um, yeah, the biggest mistake you basketball players, coaches make, is you guys play year-round. You never, and, and I get it, but it's crazy. You guys should not be in tournaments year-round. You, If you can't find six weeks or two sets of six weeks to do the Mass Made Simple, you got a problem. Um, I would recommend... Brett Contreras now also has a thing. I want to say they're maybe the Magic Six. or It's a competition. But uh, he's got these six exercises he's focusing on. The weighted chin up, the military, the bench, the squat, the deadlift, the hip thrust. But uh, I think there's real value there, my friend, okay? Uh, yeah, mass made simple I think would work really well. If you have to drop down, so if you have a guy who weighs 200 have them drop to 185. A guy weighs 185, use 135. That's fine because of the height issue. But boy, do I think there's value to what you're saying. 
Really, I, I like the idea. Uh, please get back to me after you do Mass Made Simple. I know it's basketball season now. And let's walk through to see if we can make any uh, adjustments or changes for you, okay? Well, there you go, folks. Now, listen, remember, if you have questions, podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. I'm always here to help. Uh, I love the questions. I thought this is about the third or fourth week in a row where the questions have been outstanding. It gives me a lot of juice, a lot of excitement to answer these questions. Um, by the way, though, don't make up a question to make it juicy. I'm here to answer anything you have. And remember, until next time, keep on lifting and learning. Thank you so much.